In our previous video, I talked about the one eyeshadow that you need to know how to apply to make everything else so much easier. Then we added a dark shadow and turned it into a smoky eye just using one more eyeshadow. Now we're going to add two more eyeshadows to take it from a smoky eye to a cut crease. So we have our first eyeshadow. This eyeshadow is a mixture between your blush, bronzer, contour, even your favorite shade of nude lipstick. It's all of those things in one. So just make sure you're adjusting this to work for you. For our second eyeshadow, we want to pick a depth that we are willing to go. I want this to be a medium smoky eye, so I have an eyeshadow much darker than my skin tone, but you can adjust this to work for you. I also want you to start off by using a matte shadow if you were a beginner, because if you can make matte work for a smoky eye, you can do every smoky eye. But before we get into all of that, we first of all want to prep the lids. I have very dry lids, so I like to use a very sheer layer of primer, or sometimes I'll just use a matte concealer. But I do want to show the difference between using a primer versus just concealer as a base. Now, the difference in appearance isn't that obvious, but you do have a little bit more pigment on the primed side. But here is the test. I'm going to rub this with a dry cotton pad. This kind of represents the wear over a long period of time. Not that you're going to be rubbing your eyes, but as you can see, the one without primer disappears compared to the one where we used eyelid primer. And holding onto pigment is very important for a smoky eye. Firstly, less fallout because we have something that the shadow can hold onto, and it will also keep the depth for us with less chance of it fading throughout the day. Now that we have a good base, let's talk about parts of the eyes. We are gonna be focusing on two areas. The lid, this can be visible or not with the eyes open. And then the other area is the crease. Now this is actually the crease line. The crease itself is more like this, blended all the way up, fading into nothingness as it reaches the eyebrows. And we're actually gonna be starting with our crease shadow. This should be lighter of the two shadows. Sometimes people over apply their darker shadow thinking that that is what makes a smoky eye but really this shadow needs to be higher than your darker one. Now, before we apply, let's recap on how we hold a brush. I feel the most comfortable holding the brush in the middle of the handle. I also hold it like a pen, but a little bit more stretched out with my pinky and my ring finger kicked out for balance. My index finger is sitting on top and the brush is pinched between my middle and my thumb. I want you to try keeping your eyes open, but looking down in a mirror. This will allow you to see the shape that you're creating while also giving you access to the lid space. You want to watch for the height of the hand as well. I like to keep it at about nose level height, slightly tilted upwards. Now we're ready to apply. We're going to sweep this into the crease line, blending over and back. And by keeping your eyes open, you're able to see the shape that you're creating. Think of this like contouring your face or shaping your cheeks with blush. You want to follow the natural curve and shape of the eyes. You can sweep this over and back, which is what we used to call the windscreen wiper motion. However, some people find this can go a little bit muddy or for mature lids, your lid can kind of move as you swipe. So what I would recommend doing is little circular motions, little swirls, working counterclockwise and clockwise, working in towards the nose in one direction, and then swirling in the opposite direction, working your way out. We can apply a little bit more of this shadow if we need to after we apply our second one, but you should end up with something that looks like this. Fading upwards towards the brows, leaving a blank space underneath the arch. And this is a transition application or a mid-tone application, basically contouring, shaping, and framing the eyes. If you want to, you can also apply this all over the lid. However, bear in mind that you will be creating a layer between the primer and the deeper eyeshadow. So maybe try out both ways to see what works for you. Now we can add the second shadow. This shadow should be applied with a flat brush. As we talked about in our previous video, a flat brush is great for pressing the eyeshadow onto the lid. You can press in a horizontal or vertical shape. I like to bring my hand off to the side just so I'm still able to look in a mirror and see what I'm doing. Now I'm still holding the brush like a pen, but just a little bit higher up on the brush so that we have more control and we can apply a little bit more pressure because we want to be pressing this over the lid area. Especially because we are using a matte shadow, I do find you have to use this press and lift motion. Every time you pick up a little bit more eyeshadow, I want you to tap off any excess and then just start to build and blend these layers up as you go. Now this is quite different from how we applied the shimmer. Remember with the shimmer, we did this swiping and gliding motion working across the lid. That's because we wanted that shimmer and that glitter to rest on the lid and allow it to shine. And that's also because shimmers tend to have a little bit more moisture in them compared to matte eyeshadows, which are more on the dry side. So when you're using a matte eyeshadow, you do want to use this pressing motion to really get that pigment on there. So I like to do a press and then a very gently pull the edges 
and swipe it and press it down onto the lid. Now it's up to you what you want to do with the outer edge. I like to bring it down and under around my eyes to create a round shape, leaving this area blank so that we create that roundness. But if you want to, you can also elongate your eyes. So you can pull this up at an angle using the lower lash line as a guide. It's totally up to you which shape you want to create. Do you want the more rounded or lifted? You pick your angle. Once we cover the lid with the dark eyeshadow, we then want to blur the two shadows together to remove any harsh lines. Now this can be done with a clean brush or you can pick up a little tiny bit of that first shadow and sweep this where the lid and the crease meet. No need to overdo this. Use whatever's left over in the brush until it goes clean and then just keep blending. Only add if you feel like you need to. We still want some difference, so don't over blend the two shadows together. The lid should always be a little bit darker and then blending upwards into the crease. I also like to sweep this underneath the eyes just with whatever's left over on the brush. The brush is pretty much clean at this stage, so really I'm just blending what's already there. I then just finish with mascara and some lashes. I do find with the smoky eye, it's best to apply a little bit of mascara just to frame and bring out the eyes a little bit more. Now we're going to add two more eyeshadows to take it from a smoky eye to a cut crease. And this is done by using concealer. You need a small brush, synthetic if you can. Concealer or lip brushes are great, but it needs to be flat. I find if I pick up a little concealer and pinch it between my fingertips, I can create this really smooth, sharp line. See how flat it becomes? This is what we want. I'd also recommend looking down in a mirror, eyebrows slightly upwards, and maybe even tilt your head back so you can see this outline. This is the crease line, and this is the line that we want to follow. Now this is very similar to how we apply eyeliner. So you can rest your elbow on a table and lean over a mirror, or you can rest your pinky on your cheek for a little bit of support. Start by applying a small amount on the inner third of the lid. A little will go a long way. And we're doing a pressing and pulling motion, similar to how we applied the matte eyeshadow. And you can keep it low to begin with because when we want to create that shape, what we're gonna do is look upwards. This will create a stamp of the concealer so we can see the outline of our crease. And then just follow that line to create the shape. Now, if you have uneven lids, what you can do is add some balance by going higher or lower, depending on how you want your eyes to match. Once I reach the halfway point of my lid, I like to just take a clean finger and tap off any excess right in the middle. And you should end up with something that looks like this. The inner third to half is covered, so it's much lighter now. And I like to tilt it up at an angle, the same angle that follows my lower lash line. The outer half is still dark, and then above in the crease, we have this transition shade that blends upwards and fades. However, this middle line does not fade. It looks very harsh and unfinished, but we're not gonna worry about that just yet. We'll come back to it. First, we want to set the concealer with a light eyeshadow. Now for my mature lids or my dry eyes, you can use this instead of using concealer. You won't get as much payoff. It won't be as strong, but it is a great way to make sure it's nice and light. So if you feel like it looks or feels heavy because of the concealer, you can just skip it and use the light eyeshadow. And feel free to use this underneath the brow arch if you want to. Now remember that harsh line in the middle? We want to use a fade shade. Now this is what I call a fade shade. It's basically a transition shade, but a little bit bolder. I suggest even using a little bit of your blush for this. Now my favorite brush to apply my fade shade with is this one. I've had this brush for 10 years and it's still my go-to. You want to pick up a little bit of that blush tone and blur and blend at halfway point line. Very lightly sweep right in the middle and then you can blend this across the lid, bringing it all the way over. And you can also bring this up into the crease line to add that pro finish. You can even blend this underneath the lower lash line all around the eyes. It's actually one of my favorite steps to do to create that really pro finish. Then go ahead and apply some mascara, some lashes, which are totally optional. And then there we go. We have three options with the same base, just adding a little as we go. We added a smoky tone in the previous video, a shimmery tone in the one before that, and now we have taken the smoky look one step further to create this look. That's why it's so important to know how to apply that first eyeshadow. Now I will be refilling these soon because I really like the information, but I've had some issues with my camera, so I know sometimes it was very blurry, but I hope the information was informational for you. And as always, my friends, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others. I will see you in the next one. Oh, and also if you need any more help or if something isn't working for you, let me know because I am always here to help. <laughs>